Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. Active range again today, so background noise, sorry. Uh, we're being a little bit optimistic today. In an earlier video, we shot a Sterling semi-auto open bolt at 100 and 200 meters. Today, we're gonna go for its predecessor. I have here, I've had it for quite a while actually, a uh, semi-auto open bolt Sten. And this one was uh, blocked at semi-auto back in the day by the judicious application of weld to the selector. So the selector can't be pushed across into the uh, automatic position, so it is stuck in the R for repetition position. Now, one of the things that is characteristic of the Sten Mark II is that the front sight is just in front of the magazine here. So the sight radius is kind of short and the barrel is uh, takedown, it's dismantleable. So the barrel nut comes off and the barrel comes out. Now this brings us to an interesting point about this design because let's just say that these barrels, well for a start they're made in two pieces, the, uh, the thick breech end is actually a separate piece which is then pinned on, and you can see the see the pin there. Um, so yes, yeah, so let's just say that these are not set up like bench rest barrels and put up between centers so that the outside of the barrel and the inside of the barrel are perfectly concentric. So we get an issue where depending on what angle this barrel is at, it's going to shoot to a different place because it is not very much not concentric and at 25 meters the difference it makes is about that and by turning it round you can actually make make the uh, the shots track in quite a wide circle but that kind of wide um, so the barrel sits in a seating in here and then it's held by the barrel nut which clamps it down against the seating and the question is how do we tell if it's in the right orientation because if you don't you're going to have a bad time now they are in fact marked if it was ever set up as a gun wasn't from a uh, random surplus parts. There's a mark of some description. Sometimes it's a, it's a chisel mark, sometimes it's a number, part of the serial number. In this one, I don't know if you can see there, there's a really thin electro pencil line um, that indicates it. It wasn't obvious. I've been looking around and at the back here there's an inspection mark as an S, but you can't see that when it's in. It took me a while to work out that that, that wasn't just where someone had gone on something metal. That was in fact the reference mark. Now, apparently this isn't a general problem, but I could see it, could see it being, uh, which is that this one rotates ever so slightly under recoil because as the bullet is accelerated into, um, into a spin, it has the tendency to push the barrel in the opposite direction. So what I'm gonna do, um, <laughs> at a 25 meters, I know I have to aim low. Don't know how this is, going to work at 100. They're in principle sighted for 100 and uh, the front sights are actually set with a gauge so uh, what they what they do is, is they fiddle around uh, with the barrel find find the sort of optimum angle with a with a with a gauge and there were several different heights of front sight with quite significant differences in elevation between them and then they'd um, they'd set it with the gauge and tack it in place and it's actually pretty uh, it's it's not bad uh, and then the gas welded in place and it actually stops stops the uh, magazine housing assembly coming off forward. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that, now which way does it go? It's got right hand twist, so it's gonna cause it to twist left. It's a long time since I've shot this. I think I'm just gonna set it ever so slightly too far to the right. And by the manual, you screw that on, then you bring that round there and there's uh, there's a claw that goes in there. The pin helps index the uh, uh, index the mag housing to the receiver tube. The ratchet, and then we just give it an almighty great. And we shall see how this goes. Now, as you may have seen, a scope has appeared behind me because Chappie has arrived and saved the day. So that means I will be doing less walking to and from the target. So. 10 rounds, here we go. This is not an optimal sight picture for, uh, for this kind of range. And I've got to avoid my fingers getting too close to the ejection port. These are not really designed for prone shooting. 
But I'm going to aim at the middle as best I can and then see where they go. Okay, so we can talk about something interesting here, which is how to deal with a situation where you don't know where you are on target. So what I'm gonna first do is see if we're going over the top. So what I'll do is I'll aim low central. And basically, we can work the corners of the target until we see some hits. I'm gonna need more ammo. And the target's about a meter wide. In fact, the scoring area is a meter wide. So that was the bottom centre of the frame. Am I seeing hits? No. There's no point in trying high because I know that it shoots high at 25. Let's try... Let's just try in the sand, actually, next to the target. No, I'm not seeing anything. It's too... Uh, it's too wet. It's been too wet. Much, much later. So I've got a friend behind me looking through the scope. We're going to aim at the... Uh, Bit of dirt there, and see if he sees any splash. Squirt. Okay, meter three, in the middle. Xer Sherpis? Garnus. Much, much, much later. Okay, underneath the target. Oh no, I'm help for the sheep, yeah? Yeah, I saw that. Okay, so we're shooting very, very high. Let's see if we can bring that onto the target. Yeah. Okay. We are on. I'm having to aim a very, very, very long way down. So let's see if I can just put some more ammo in and see if we can get some form of vague group. At least it's not got a lateral deviation. It seems to be about on for that. Okay, right, apparently they're all low, but they're all on, so that's giving us something. I've got a half decent aiming point. Let's, uh, let's wander down there and have a look. Here we are. So I was aiming effectively somewhere down there um, at the, uh, the bottom of the, uh, the wood chips in front of the target. And then we've got a group, well, that in there as well. So it was so low that even when I was aiming down here, it would have been going over the top and we didn't get any hits up there. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Can't remember. So yeah, and actually surprisingly well centered. It's just that it was shooting massively high. So the zero on that is massively out for elevation, but it's fine for windage. So given that they were all aimed at the same point, that's given a good indication of the grouping capacity. I don't think it's worth doing it again, holding, well, that much higher. Um, I think it proves the point that um, grouping capacity wise, this would be effective at 100 meters, 
Um, I presumably, presumably most of them are actually better zeroed for elevation than that, but uh, uh, I've got a sample size of one right now. Compared to the Sterling, this is nothing. Um, with that sight radius and everything, and the big fat barley corn sight, it's, it's kind of hard to aim, certainly compared to the Sterling. Um, doctrinally, or at least in the early manual, they were used up to 100 meat yards, yards, um, with in semi-automatic. But in reality, with wartime trained conscripts, um, how much of that will actually have been done to any great effect in reality, or will it have been mostly used by section commanders at the final part of an assault, coming into a position at 25 yards and less, probably, and in automatic as well. So there you go, that ended up being less of an absolute disaster as I was fearing part of the way through. I mean, it's not bloke on the range unless something goes wrong, of course. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much to Statutes and Toon, particularly Buddy and Dima for organizing these days on this lovely range here. Um, and yeah, thank you very much to patrons who keep the channel ticking over and keep us producing at a one video a week rate. So thank you all. If you haven't become a patron yet, please consider doing so. We're all very grateful, grateful for any and all help that people give us. It, Keeps us going, keeps our wives happy. And uh, see you later. Bye.